Hello, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. Today we're gonna to take a look at making a connector lip piece for a two-piece enclosure. So here I have the Raspberry Pi 2 Game Girl 2 case, and it is a two-piece enclosure, but I wanted to make uh, a little connector piece uh, to make it have a better friction hold instead of having to rely on screws or something like that. So if we take a look at it, let's take um, a step back here in my timeline to show you what it looked like before. So I'll add a, I'll turn on the analysis so you can see through it. And you can see that the two enclosure pieces connect in the middle and they don't have anything that holds them together other than a couple of screws. So I wanted to create a little bit more of a friction hold. So to do that, I added a little lip thing. So if we go uh, in the timeline and go forward a couple of steps, you can see I have a little bit of lip piece coming from the bottom that goes on the inside of the second top piece so that it has some friction and it holds it in place. So normally what I would do to make that is I would make a two millimeter thick enclosure, split it in the middle and shell it out, you know, using two millimeters. And then I would subtract an offset from the outside on one piece of, of about a millimeter. And then I would subtract it again on the other piece, but on the inside making this sort of um, thing that connects, like the two pieces sort of uh, connect to each other. But I figured out a much easier way to do it without having to redo the shell or add more material to the pieces. I can, well, I'm adding more material to the pieces, but not so much across the entire thing. So let's take a look at how you can do this on your enclosures. If you have a two piece enclosure, uh, this is a good way to of course have them snap fit together. So I'm gonna just come here and delete these three steps three operations is all it takes so i'll delete them now go back to where we started from and this is really where i did it um i did it near the end of the of the enclosure design it's just like a, a sort of an afterthought thing like hey it wouldn't be really nice to to do that so actually before i do that let me show you a couple of let me show you the way that it is uh, mounted so i have two counter sunk um, standoffs here so a screw goes all the way on the inside and, and then connects to this piece and this piece here so if we open up the thing you can see that the standoff is actually kind of floating it is floating but it has it's I use the draft feature which you can use here to make a sort of not a 45 de degree angle but a like 15 or 20 degree angle so that I don't need any supports to print that or this piece but I'll show you that in another tutorial if you're interested. But in this one, we're gonna add that connector piece to the bottom. Um, I could add it to the top, but I felt that it would be nice on the bottom. So how does the how does this piece hold onto? How does the top part hold the, the enclosure together? Well, it kind of doesn't with screws, but it kind of does. So if we look at the, you can kind of see through this the case. You can see that um, there are four standoffs but they're actually, they hold the screen in place to the actual case here. So if we, let me hide some components here, hide all this stuff, and then just show, and let me get rid of the bottom for a second, and then show the screen, so I'll get rid of the pie. So you can see that I actually have to screw from the inside. I, I, I screw in here to the standoff. Now if I get rid of that, you can see the standoffs. So there's four standoffs there. And that's what holds that piece in place. To hold the, the Raspberry Pi in place, I have four other standoffs on the back here, but they get mounted through the bottom here, not through the inside, through the bottom. And anyway, when you connect the two pieces together, they of course use the Raspberry Pi GPIO, and the screen has its own uh, female connector, for the GPIO, and they just sort of snap together. But I found that it's kind of, it, it's not loose, but your fingers can kind of pull them to, to part, and there's a tiny little gap. So to, to fix that gap, I figured I would do that little lip connector piece. So let's go ahead and get to that. I just wanted to show you guys a little background of uh, what we have here. So the first thing I need to do is pick, um, you know, do I want the top or do I want the bottom? That's up to you. I'm going to use the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to project a sketch. So you can find that under sketch and using uh, this option here, project slash include. Project, I also have it saved up here, so I'm gonna click on that. Now you have to select a surface that you would like to project. So I'm gonna project this top edge here of the of the case, the bottom case. 
So click on that, it highlights it blue and pretty much traces that out for you. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm in the sketch editing environment. So I got my sketch palette, stop sketch up here. And that's pretty much traced. So it's traced that whole thing. It didn't trace this piece out because it's its own surface. And I actually don't need to make a lip there. I'm just gonna leave those away. I'm just gonna leave those alone. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I need to make an offset so that I can offset uh, this line here to make the edge, to make the connector piece. So I'm gonna click on offset, it's under sketch. You're gonna find it under here. So I'm gonna click on that. And then you have to roll over uh, an edge to, to not project it, but to offset it. So the only edge is available is the one that we traced using project, so I'm gonna click on that. And once you click and let go, you, you can move the mouse around to adjust the offset. Or you can type in uh, a number. In this case, I only want it to be one millimeter thick. So I'm just gonna type in one millimeter and hit enter. And then it creates that, um, that offset. But we need to modify it because if we were to extrude this piece, it would actually extrude on the outside as well. So we don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the bottom case. And I'm gonna start deleting some, ed some edges, some lines. So I only need this piece here going out throughout the whole thing. So I'm actually going to delete some of these things. And once you delete one, it's going to um, unshade that piece because it's not because it's no longer a closed sketch. It's now a open sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all the edges that I actually don't need to make uh, the thing. So I'm just going to delete all these guys here and only only leave the piece that's going to make a connector lip. So I'm just going to. Delete all those, come down here, delete this. That marquee didn't work, but oh well. Like that, like that. This one, and I think that's all of them there. Oh, we have two, over, two of them over here. Delete that, and delete that. So now we have our, just what we need for now. So if I bring back the bottom case you can see it only has um, the edges for the outside of the lip that we're gonna make so I'll hide it again and now I'm gonna close the sketch off so to do that I'm gonna hit the line tool and when you roll over an, uh, a point it'll give you this little uh, square indicator showing you that it's, con it's gonna click to that that point so I'm gonna click on it and then just um, move the mouse all the way out and start intersecting with it I don't have to be precise I'm just gonna make sure that it intersects with it. And then I'll hit escape. So I have that intersecting now. And then the last piece should be down here. So I will do the same thing. Click on the line tool, click on a point, and then just click to intersect that line. And then um, I'll hit escape again. So now you can see that I got it shaded. I can click on that to make it blue. And now that's our closed sketch. That's pretty much it for modifying the sketch, if I bring back the bottom case, you can see that it is um, right where we want it to be. It's uh, flush with our edge there, cuts right there, and stops right over here, and then actually whips around this counter uh, bore area here. So that's cool, a little standoff there. So that's cool. So now I'm going to hit stop sketch because we're done with it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to extrude it. So under create, you can click on extrude or hit E on your keyboard for the, for the, heat, for the hot key and then just click on that um, sketch that we made. So the, the, you can start pulling it up or you can type in a number. In my case, I want three millimeters. And I'm going to change the direction from one-sided to symmetric. And what that's going to do is going to make it symmetric. It's going to make it so, let me hide the thing, so that it makes it go up and down uh, um, from the sketch. So I'm gonna bring back the bottom case and I'm gonna make sure that the operation is set to join because it's gonna join the extrude to that uh, to the bottom case, so hit okay. So now all we have to do is one last thing is if you look at the lip that we created underneath it, we have an overhang. It's a one millimeter overhang. It's kind of okay, but you can quickly alleviate that, make the printer work less by adding a chamfer. So I'm gonna click on the chamfer button and click on this edge here on the outside and it'll add that chamfer. But we need to hold down command key or control on PC uh, and, and, and select um, the rest of the edges uh, that, that, that have that overhang. So we'll just, clip, just keep on holding the, um, the command or control key until you select them all. It's only five edges that you have to select. Um, distance is one, of course. 
and it's making a, a 45 degree uh, chamfer angle thing. So I hit OK, and that's pretty much it. Now I have my connector lip piece. If I bring back the, the top case, and then I, I activate my section analysis piece, you can see there it's got that overhang at the bottom across the whole thing, and it has that lip across the whole thing. And if you, re and you, if you bring back all your components, make sure that they don't intersect, you know, that they don't touch. That's why I made it a thickness of uh, one millimeter, so it doesn't. It really it has a lot of wiggle room. Nothing's touching, so it's really nice. And I think that's it. That's it, guys. Um, let's take a look at the actual printed part. So here it is. <laughs> doesn't fall apart. Connects them well. Just need a little bit of force to pull them apart. But I really like this detail here, uh, where it whips around that uh, that standoff. Those two standoffs. So that actually gives it a lot more geometry to work with. A lot more material. And the three millimeters of height across this whole thing really gives it enough material. Um, I, at first, I wasn't sure if the tolerances would need to be adjusted, like a 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 millimeter offset. Uh, but it snaps really nice. Um, there's enough uh, tolerance there to hold it together. Uh, there's really no play. It's really exact. And it works really well. So in addition to the screws that are going to get mounted here and the... The component that's of course going to hold it together, the GPIO header. This thing is really nice. Um, so we could not use screws, but because of the weight and all that, um, it might pull it apart. But it's it's really nice. It's got the extra enforcement to it. So that's pretty much it. That's a quick way on how you can add a lip using a sketch, uh, a project sketch, and then an offset, and then just kind of tweaking that sketch a little bit, and then extruding, of course. So we did that all with just uh, three operations. So that's a really quick way to do it. Um, a lot better than the, the old way I used to do it. So there you have it, guys. If you have any questions or you have any other better ways of doing uh, a lip connector thing, let me know in the comments. It'll help me out and help other people out as well. But uh, if you have any other questions, of course, or anything you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments below, and I'll, and I'll uh, take a look at that. Um, but in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. But until then, remember to keep on a cabin. Bye, guys.